Now let us discuss the speed of the longitudinal waves in an elastic medium. For that, let us consider a cylinder like this. It is fitted with a piston at one of its ends. Let this be the piston and this be the cylinder. Clear. Suppose this is the initial position. This is the piston and this is the initial position of the piston. Now this cylinder is filled with or the cylinder contains air molecules of density rho. Let rho be the density of air molecules density of air molecules now what you are doing is we are just pushing the piston to the right that is what will happen if you push the piston that is now the piston is here like this The initial position of the piston is here. Now we just pushed that with a velocity. This is the initial position of the piston, that is this one. Now you have pushed it with a velocity u towards right. So what basically happens to this air molecules is, suppose if there are air molecules, normal air molecules in here, these molecules will move towards right. Also, these molecules will get compressed like this. I'm not, I'm not drawing the exact way that get that air molecules get compressed, but in a way, these molecules get compressed due to the pushing of the piston. Now, the the molecules will be here. Clear. This is the molecules compressed to molecules. So let V be the V be the velocity of the compressed air molecules. So in time delta t, this is the length covered by the air molecules. Let's say L1 is the length covered. And we know that L1 is equal to since the velocity of the air molecules is V, L1 equal to V delta t. And at the same time delta t, the distance covered by the piston, let's say L2, is equal to u delta t. We have distance is equal to velocity into time. And this line is basically, this line, this green line, and this one is molecules, the compressed molecules. This line is the line which sub separates the compressed molecules from the normal molecules. After this line, on the right of this line, we get the normal molecules. But in here, it is the compressed molecule. It's clear. Now, we need to find the mass of the air molecules in the volume here. So, mass m is equal to, we have mass is equal to volume into density. But volume is equal to cross section area A. Let this is a cylinder with a cross sectional area A. Cylinder with a cross sectional area A. So, volume is equal to area into length L1 into density. That is, mass m is equal to A into, but you know L1 is equal to V delta T, V delta T times rho. Let's call that as equation number 1. Before that, initially, without any motion of the piston, we have the initial momentum is equal to 0. No doubt about that because the piston is at rest. Now we want to find the final momentum PF. So we have the final momentum or the momentum momentum imparted by imparted by the piston. the momentum imparted by the piston, let's call that as Pf, is equal to, what will be the momentum? The momentum is equal to mass into, since the piston is moving with the velocity, so the momentum imparted by the piston will be mass into velocity of the piston. But you know mass is equal to this one. So final momentum Pf is equal to A 
V delta T rho into U. Now, let's call that as equation number 2. So, the change in momentum, change in momentum delta P is equal to, we have final momentum minus initial momentum, which is equal to A V delta T rho U minus 0. That is, that is, we have the change in momentum delta P is equal to A V delta T rho times u. Let us call that as equation number 3. Now, from the Newton's law of motion, we have Newton's law of motion, second law of motion, we have the force F is equal to rate of change of momentum, delta P by delta T, which is equal to, we have delta P is equal to a v delta t rho times u divided by delta t. You can cancel this delta t and delta t. Therefore, f is equal to a v rho u. Let us call that as equation number 4. So, what about pressure? We have force is equal to pressure into area. The pressure exerted by the molecules air molecules into cross-sectional area will be the force. So, you can write this as A, V, Rho, U, where P is the pressure. Pressure. Now, you can cancel this A and this A. So, the equation of pressure will be, you can rearrange this as Rho times or you can write V, Rho into U. Let us call that as equation number 5. Now, what we basically are doing is we are compressing we are compressing the air molecules isn't it using this piston we are compressing the air molecules so we compression means we are changing the volume okay we have by definition bulk modulus bulk modulus bulk modulus is equal to the pressure exerted by the volumetric strain that is change in volume divided by the original volume and this turns out to be pressure into initial volume divided by change in volume that is P into see this is the initial volume and we have the initial volume is equal to cross sectional area into length length is V delta T and this represents, that is this one, this region, this region represents the change in volume. So, the change in volume will be this length is L2, the cross section area into U delta T. You can cancel this delta A and delta T. So, bulk modulus B will be PV divided by U implies you can find the value of P from here, P is equal to bulk modulus into U divided by V. Let us call that as equation number 6. And if you compare the equation 5 and 6, you will find that they both tell about the magnitude of pressure from 5 and 6. So, you can equate that. So, B U divided by V is equal to V rho U. Because we know equation 5 equal to equation 6. You can cancel this U. And we have B by rho equal to V into V. V into V. Or you can write V square is equal to. Which means B by rho is equal to V square. Or root of B by rho equal to V, taking the square to the right. That is velocity of the longitudinal wave in an elastic medium is the root of bulk modulus by its density. So, this is the expression for the velocity.